When we're talking about mode of transports that's uh, family friendly, good value for money, all wheel drive, plenty of space, there's always this guy that comes up in conversation. Just kidding, we're talking about this, the 2024 Skoda Enyaq. So, we're actually in Morocco to test the 2024 Skoda Enyaq, which in Morocco, by the way, they have the world's largest solar power plant, which we also drove to to have a look at. And it's absolutely incredible to see. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this, which is the 2024 Skoda Enyaq. And this comes in different flavors. You have the 60 edition, you have three 85 variants. So you have the 85 edition, the 85X, uh, the 85, LNK, which is homage to the founders, and we have the VRS version as well. So this one here is the 85X Sportline, which we're going to be talking about. It's actually the Sportline Plus. Uh, so we're going to be talking about this and see what the updates are because this goes after, this is actually the updated version because before we had the 80 and the 80X, but now it's 85 edition and 85X. A lot to talk about there. Let's start with the front. In terms of the design, we have the full matrix LED lights, which are also uh, have the variable distribution, which is great for driving at nighttime, not blinding other people on the road and all that kind of stuff. On the front, we have this black grille there, obviously it's electric. You might also be able to spec this up to have the crystal grille there. So if you can afford that, get that. On here, there we have the badge there. I love the chiseled bonnets as well. Makes it look sporty. And then below here, we have the side air curtains, which are actually real. So they pass air through there and then helps cool the, the bay, the engine bay and stuff like that. So it looks really good. I think they've done a great job uh, making this look very sporty, being the Sport Plus version as well, Sportline Plus, uh, and it looks very sporty. I like it. We've been driving this around and it feels that way as well. On the side, we have our Sportline badge. So you know that this is a Sportline edition. And then here we have our 20 inch alloys, set of alloys, which looks fantastic. I love this size because it's in proportion with the SUV uh, design. Looks really good. On the side, we have that leading line that goes all the way to the back, makes it look sharp on the side as well. Not many cars have good side view, but this one has a good side view. If you get the coupe version, it drops a bit lower and it looks probably a bit smarter, I would say, but SUV looks good as well. Um, I'm not gonna complain. And we have a little spoiler on the back here as well. And yeah, just looks really good. This is around 4.6, 4.7 meters long. And then the wheelbase is around 2.6 meters as well. And then having that long wheelbase there means you get longer, you know, bigger leg room when you sit in the back and also for the driver as well. We'll have a look at that when we get in the car. Over on the back, let's talk about this as well. They've changed it ever so slightly because before, those of you who knows this car, you notice that they used to have the IV on the back. They've taken that out completely. And now we have 85X here. I love this black finishing on the logo as well. I think it suits this blue color and it just looks very smart on the back. And then we open up the boot. Before we do that, we have window wipers on the back, something that we don't get on many cars anymore. But yeah, let's uh, pop this open. You can see we have a lot in the boot right now, which is a good representation of how practical this is because this will give you 585 liters of boot space. And if you fold the seats down, you're looking at 1,710 liters of boot space. You can, fill, you can fit a whole person in here. In fact, if Skoda decided to put an extra row in the back, they probably could in this and still have enough space to fit things in it. That's how big this is. It's a big whole space to store. Uh, we have two hand luggage there. We have a couple of backpacks and there's still space to maybe even sit in the back. So there's no, there's no issues there at all when it comes to space. Over on the right side, you have your charging port and this supports DC charging. That's gone up as well. So we're talking 175 kilowatts uh, possibility now. So you can charge this up 10 to 80% in no time at all. Over in the back, there's plenty of space and it's nice and comfortable. I love the sitting position. I could easily sit here for a long period of time. Space for my feet to tuck it in there if I need to. Plenty of space for my knees as well. Plenty of headroom here as well. I'm about five foot 10, five foot 11. And then in terms of the pockets on the back seat, there's one here for the duck for your documents. You can even pop your phone in this tiny little one here and it's nice and secure in place. In the door cabin, there's plenty of space as well, enough to store a big old bottle in there comfortably well without moving anywhere. So just pop that in there, there you go. And I love this little hold handle here as well where you can just tuck your elbow in and hold on to it as you Yes, you're there. You can also use it to open the door kind of thing. It's got some carbon finishing all around the car. So like, for example, there's some here. And then in terms of the material, we have this micro suede uh, material mixed with leather finishing as well. So plenty of premium features here. And then here, instead of having a, a tunnel in the middle, we have this thing here that's going to also come off as well. So you can put things in there. And then we have two USB-C ports there, climate controls here for the back passengers. And then if we pull this down, we have space 
for your arm rest uh, so your elbow can sit here comfortably. The good thing about this is there's no cup holder situated here, so your elbow, your elbow is not gonna sink into that place. So if you want your cup holder, just fold this down. You can place your cups and bottles and whatnot. You can place it in there. And when you're not doing so, tuck it back in and you're good to go. And then there's another gap here. I should probably close this as well a little bit. And then you've got space to get it in the back in case, in case you forget anything. So I always like it when they do that because uh, it's actually a very practical thing because as many times I've forgotten things in the back and that helps. The only thing that's missing for me at the back is the fact that there's no panoramic sunroof in this. Over in the front, we have this sporty seat, which looks fantastic. It's got that uh, micro suede uh, finishing as well. And it's got nice stitching all over it. I love the carbon finishing, the nice and subtle and blends in very well with the leather sort of finishing everywhere with the stitching on there as well. It looks really good. What's missing here is the heads up display, which I'll talk about more when we start driving. But we did get that instrument cluster in front of me, which is nice and slim, nice and tidy, and is not distracting, which I quite like. Some people don't like it because it's not big enough, but I think it's perfect with the size that it is. Then we have a 13 inch display here, which you can control many things with, but you still be able to control or activate your climate control with buttons here. So there's a mixture of the touchscreen display, volume control slider here, and then a couple of buttons here for park assist, assist system and climate control. And then here we have two wireless charging areas and we have two USB-C charging ports. And then we have the world's smallest bottle holders. Like look at the size of this bottle here. That's the size that you can actually only fit here, as you can see. So if you get to yourself one of those Costa or Starbucks or whatever you drink, the coffee cups, you might actually struggle to get them in there. So that's a minus there, but still pretty, still pretty good so far. And then we have another space here to store things. So for example, maybe keys or quickly drop a phone there if you don't want to charge it. And then gear shift is there, parking brake and stuff. More space here, including the tray if you want to break it down or you can ditch this and just have a big space there to store a bunch of stuff. You know, if you have kids, you might want to store tissues to wipe their nose and stuff like that. It's all in there for you. And then underneath here, there's another big, big space here, which you can then store maybe your handbag or whatever. You can put that there as well. So in terms of space, there are some space, door cabins there as well, but cup holder could be bigger. But that's pretty much here what you get. And this armrest can be adjusted as well. So you can sort of adjust it all the way to the top so you can rest your elbow whilst you drive and you become nice and comfortable. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, actually, there's one more thing in the door. It's an umbrella. Let me show you. So over in the door cabin, we have a Skoda umbrella. Pretty smart. Maybe this should be in the back door though. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So on the 13 inch display, this supports Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Apple CarPlay is definitely wirelessly, but we haven't tried Android Auto if it's wireless or not, but it's there, wireless or whatever. You can try that yourself if you do get one of these. But the main thing is this is very smooth. It just works really well. The mapping is there and you can adjust some of these icons and widgets as well to suit your preference. If we go to this button here, this will take us to vehicle settings and we can look at the assist systems and see what's available. So we have Lane Keep, uh, assist over there, attention monitor, drowsiness monitor, front assist, adaptive cruise control. So a bunch of safety equipment that's available, ready to go for uh, your driving style. So it's entirely up to you how you use that. We go back to vehicle settings. You can see things like background lighting for the in-car, inside of the car, you've got parking on here. So you've got parking, for example, you can see that we've got the camera uh, over there as well and sensors and all sorts. Uh, and we've got different angles. So we've got sound settings, so you can adjust things like your treble, bass, etc. The usual stuff, which is good. You've got charging menu option there as well. So you can see, you can set your charging limits in case you, someone you just drive in the city, you can just set it and save your battery health. So charge it to 80%. But if you're going on longer journeys, charge it all the way to 100%. You've got plenty of options there to play with, but it's pretty much straightforward, very easy to use. And that's the main thing. And one thing you can also check is your driving mode. So here we have eco, normal, sport, traction and individual. We use that traction when we did some a bit of off-roading, so that's very useful for that, so you get plenty plenty of traction uh, with your tyres. This also has energy recuperation, and on the steering we have a couple of paddle shifts there, so you can change levels from level one order to level three for energy recuperation, and it almost gives you one pair of drive-in when you go to level three. So that's pretty much it while I wanted to show on here, but it's, the main thing is it works really well, it's very smooth, 
and that's really good. And if you're still wondering to what extent is this fully capable, well, behind me is a version that's been driven by a lovely couple across Africa. They've done around 40,000 kilometers, obviously with extra help using panels here for household cooking stuff. And then they've got over 60 panels there at the back that adds around 200 kilometers in a day to the car for extra range. All right, it's time for a drive and there's no better place to take the Enyaq than actually the roads of Morocco, which this is my first time here. And while we're here, we also have the coupe version in red and we're driving the SUV in this nice blue color, which looks fantastic across all the terrains here, the colors and the vibe that Morocco has to give. Speaking about Morocco, fun fact for you, we have a red city and a blue city as well. It's not a coincidence and it's got nothing to do with the colors of the car that we're driving today, by the way. I just thought I'd bring that up. And also, the Sahara Desert is the largest, the biggest desert in the world. I did not know that before I came here. I just knew about the Sahara Desert. I've been, I'm Nigerian, so I should technically know this. But anyway, I digress. Let's talk about this car though. This is an exciting car in many ways. Uh, some stats for you. This is a 210 kilowatts power output car. The battery is improved as well, so they've added some preconditioning technology on here to make it more efficient. So when it comes to charging it and stuff like that, it's a lot faster, especially in colder temperatures. So we have a 77 kilowatt hour battery in here. It's the charging is faster as well in the 85X Sportline Plus that we're driving here. Uh, so you're looking at 175 kilowatts uh, charging speed. So this sees the outgoing ATX now, so this replaces that. So this is now the 85X because it's it's got more range in it. So we're looking at right now there's 95% battery and it's saying I can do 462 kilometers, but that's based on my driving style. So it depends on how you drive. But on paper, uh, you're looking at around 539 kilometers. And if you go for the coupe version, you get uh, 10 more. So it stretches just a bit further. So it depends on what your priorities are, whether it's range or you want something just a bit more spacious. But I would say though, the space between them is not massively different. Although the coupe version that we've been in as well was actually quite great in terms of the panoramic sunroof, which looks absolutely amazing. Just gives you a sense of bigger space in the car, which is not bad. Zero to 62, you're looking at 6.6 .6 seconds, which isn't too bad at all. It's got a lot of power, a lot of oomph if you're gonna get off the line, uh, if you're gonna be joining the motorway, for example, and all that stuff. Comfortability is really good as well. Although I would say it might be different on the UK roads, but at the same time here though, we've tried all different kinds of terrains. We've been driving on nice, smooth Moroccan roads here, which is, it just feels like you're driving on, you're riding on ice in the sense of how smooth it is. It's just nice and smooth. I'm not talking about ice in terms of grippiness or anything like that, just how smooth it is. We've taken it out in the desert to see how well it handles that as well. Fantastic. And if you're still not convinced, there's so much more that this is fully capable of. So it's a fantastic all round car when it comes to the way that it operates to the character of the car. So handling is great as well, especially in low speeds. Cornering is great when you're doing the corners here, the windy roads uh, here is not bad at all. At low speeds, that's the key word. When you start to increase speed, you have to slow down because you get that weight of the car shift and you can feel it as well because you feel the lean going around bends and corners and stuff like that. So the body rolls there as well. But I think people that will be buying this, families that will be buying this, they're not gonna be doing some ridiculous speeds that requires them to worry too much about that. So that's something to bear in mind. But other than that, I think it handles it very well. I wouldn't say this is that nimble. It's agile to a certain extent, especially for the weight of the car. But I wouldn't say it's as nimble in terms of chucking around corners and stuff like that because the weight of the car comes into play. Where this car really shines is the practicality of it in terms of it's got loads of space in the car, especially even at the back, we were talking about the size of the bottle you can put in the door cabin. It's, you can put a big bottle in there and it holds it very well. You got lots of tech in here as well, big display in front of me. I actually quite like this smaller instrument cluster because it means I can keep my eyes on the road at all times. I'm not distracted by a big display uh, in front of me. There's no head-up display in this one. I'm not sure if you can spec it, uh, but there's no head-up display in this one. But the main center display, center console, the infotainment display is really big, supports Apple CarPlay. Visibility is great all around the car as well. So if I have loads of people in the car, I can still easily see all around me. The pillars aren't blocking my vision in any way at all. So uh, visibility is great. Comfortability is good as well. I think it's nice and comfortable going over speed bumps here. Like I said, driving over different terrains, it's pretty comfortable. I can drive this for four hours plus, which we've been doing on this trip and not feel fatigue driving the car. There's no seat massage though or anything like that, which is a bit of a shame, but <laughs> that will probably push the cost a bit up there if they were to add that onto the seat. You can't control it electronically, so you can adjust it so you're nice and comfortable. The steering feels good as well. 
This is a 85X Sportline edition. There's other versions as well. They have the VRS, they have the Coupe version of this, they have the 60, the 60 edition. So you have different options available, which then dishes out different power outputs, different range. So you pick the one that suits your driving needs. But yeah, I think all round, it's really good, good driver experience, and it's a fantastic looking car, even the SUV one, but I still go for the Coupe though. I think the Coupe looks just a tad bit smarter. So that's probably one I'd go for. Let me know what you think though. Which one would you go for? This one, is it worth the price tag? Let us know in the comments below and I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.